Hello, I'm Tina Arnold. And I'm Johnny Arnold. And this is Above the Below. everybody we have a little bit to talk about this week because uh originally the plan wasn't to do a podcast this week because i'm about to do a seven days straight um working period so we were gonna wait until next week to do it but uh i couldn't sleep so tina was like well you want to do the podcast Okay, let's do you know podcast. what we didn't do though? What? We didn't do a test for sound. I did it while you're upstairs. Oh, thank God, because I would hate to do another whole episode to find out that something was wrong. <laughs> yeah, been there, done that. <clears throat> so, what you got to talk about this week, honey? You want me to go first? Yeah. Well, um, so I was going to talk about like the big thing that I'm going through right now, which everybody knows. You can't look at me and not realize <laughs> I need to lose weight, you know, um, and I am on a weight loss journey that I've been on for far, far too long. So I, um, I've fallen off because I got discouraged because things were happening too slow and I'm somebody that likes instant gratification. Um, so I had fallen off with Thanksgiving and, you know, Thanksgiving <laughs> And the days that followed, and it's been really, really hard lately now to manage just, it's not how much I eat, and you can attest to that for me, no. but it's like, I guess, you know, what I'm eating and the lack of movement as much, because I was walking every single day, miles every single day, and I've stopped doing that. I don't know if it's laziness or stress or just getting well, too busy. Well, I think it's harder than the when it's cold outside. Uh, that's Nobody true. wants to go out and freeze to I'm gonna have walk. to though. Yeah. I'm gonna have to bundle in my big old sweaters <laughs> and I'm gonna have to do it. But um anyway, so I am somebody that has to have things laid out for me. Like I have to have a schedule that is really, really detailed and tells me exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And I don't have that or I didn't have that. And I was looking online being lazy for like somebody that had already made a plan that works, you know. Um, but everybody charges for it. Oh, yeah. You know, and I understand that. Everybody needs to make money. Everybody needs to make a living. You know, this world goes around on, on dollars. So I get that. But it sucks for, you know, people that may not have that to spare right now. Um, well, especially right now because of the holidays. and. Well, and it just feels like everybody is tight right now. Everybody is is hurting in one way or another financially. Well, so that, that's because our economy's in a tank. You know? So anyway, last night, um, I, you know, I have to lay down with Aiden to get him to go to sleep. Um, and last night I was laying down with him and I was scrolling ticky tock like I always do. And I got to thinking, I was like watching the, the, um, I watched healthy eating videos trying to come up with ideas for you know, how to feed my whole family. Cause I have six people to feed and everybody's palate is different. Everybody loves something that somebody else hates. And so it's very, very hard to coordinate meals um, mm. by diet and palate. And so I've, I'm always searching for something that is, it fits into my diet, but it also will please everybody else. And it's very hard. Um, and so I was I was scrolling last night and it just popped into my head. Make your schedule. 
And so I made my schedule and now, and now it's going to be, can you make yourself do it? <laughs> my schedule starts at 4.30 in the morning and ends at 8 o'clock at night. What do you mean schedule? So I literally need a schedule. I don't know if it is the ADHD or the autism or the anxiety and stress levels. Oh, you mean just for a daily run? For me to be able to function properly, I have to have a strict schedule. All right. And everything has to be laid out for every hour. Okay. I didn't know I didn't know if you meant like a eating schedule or a, it is i i need to have a but, functioning schedule i need to have an eating schedule i need to have a, a bedtime routine schedule like i need everything on schedule right that's what I, yeah that's where i was getting confused if it yes. was everything or if it was just eating or it's if you're literally my start life a, like a whole schedule for your daily whatever but it, it is it is 4.30, get up in the morning and go walk the neighborhood oh. and then come back, get Aiden up and ready for school. I even have it down to, okay, it's now time to have a glass of lemon water. So why wouldn't you walk the neighborhood when it got warmer outside? <laughs> why wouldn't I walk the neighborhood when it got warmer outside? What do you mean? Yeah, like I in mean, the day yeah. or the season? In, in the day. Um, Because I have other stuff going on. And what ends up happening, I don't know if this is how it works for other people, but for me, what ends up happening is the longer I wait, the more excuses I have to put it off. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I start to get tired. Like, I'll, I'll start to get tired really early. You know that. At, by 6.30 at night, I'm ready to go to bed. Me too. <laughs> you can't. You're at work. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how it is for me. So... My morning literally needs to start at 4.30 in order for me to function and get everything done. And then my eating schedule is for me to eat every two to three hours. Um, and I don't mean like big meals every two to three hours, but like I have to, I have to maintain. So what they keep telling me is that my metabolism is pretty much dead. And that's why it takes so long for me to lose a pound. All right. Um, so what I have to do is kind of trick it is how it's been explained to me and keep it going nonstop so that my metabolism never has time to get lazy pretty much. Right. Um, so I'd have to have like for a snack one, one hour, I'd have to have a turkey stick. The next hour I could have a cheese. I mean, not the next hour, but the next two hours from then I could have a cheese stick, you know, like that. It's just, it's not full meals. It's just snacking. Right. Healthy yep. snacks. Like nuts and cheese and... Yes. But highly maintained and strict. Right. I can't go and grab a fat fistful of walnuts and just chow down on them. I have to count them out. Mm -hmm. But what has motivated me, I was kind of teetering on whether or not I was going to talk about this or not. But what has been motivating me is not me. I mean... Obviously, I can talk myself into getting comfortable with being a big girl because I've maintained it for so long. But my biggest fear, like my biggest fear of failure as a mother is to pass this on to my kids. And so far, you know, until the flooding and mm. us staying in the hotel, everybody had been pretty well maintained that, you know, they were doing really well. They were eating well. They were maintaining a good, healthy weight percentile. You know, they were doing really well. But when we got into the hotel, we were struggling on eating healthy and, and feeding the kids healthy. And it was a lot of eating out, a lot of fast food, a lot of whatever we could buy and fit into the refrigerator. Um, it wasn't very And it was really hard to cook on the little right. old whatever the thing was. Um, and so it was very difficult. And Aiden got into really bad habits um of just eating like whatever he could get his hands on and got into eating junk food. And before that he did not eat 
a lot of junk food. And he worked out every day. Oh. But then he got in the hotel and he stopped working out and he just didn't have any, you know, he, he didn't really have great healthy habits. And that carried with him back home. And so Aiden has been worrying me because he's put on a little bit of weight and, um, you know, he and I have talked about this and I, it really freaks me out because they say that, you know, if you discuss a kid's weight with them early in their life, it can give them a complex and, you know, make, push them towards being unhealthy and overweight later. But then there's that voice inside of me that says, if I don't, you know, speak to him about it and try to give him healthier habits and try to get him on board with eating healthy. Do I just neglectfully let him walk into that? Well, I think there's a way to do it without, without it being degrading. Well, I've, I've not been degrading towards him. Oh, I know you haven't. I'm I've, just saying that in general, if people are saying that, then there's ways to do it without being degrading to a child. Right. You know, it, the people that are saying that are probably pretty harsh about or have heard other people being harsh to their to children about you know weight gain or whatever and being healthier. Right. So I don't want to I I don't want to give him any complexes, but I also don't want to hold his hand and walk him along into my life, into what I deal with. So that's been my motivator. I have got to get it under control now so that we aren't dealing with you know, problems with him later on. Right. Um, and, and me trying to help him, you know, maybe I'll help myself as well. So that's been my big struggle for the past couple of months. It's, it's taken a toll on me mentally because it's a very fine line that you walk in trying to be helpful and not hurtful. Right. Oh. So, yeah, uh, what do you call it? Tough love doesn't always help. I don't. Sometimes it does the opposite. I'm not good with tough love. <laughs> I'm not good at that. It, it's not my strong point. So I would much rather just go the other way. All right. I'm just going to love him and help him and do what I know I've learned you know, what I have learned, I'm going to put into practice and try to teach him because, you know, and a lot of people, y'all, I see this on TikTok all day long in the comments of all these um, people that I follow. It's mothers that are, they're making healthy meals and healthy snacks for their kids. And in the comments, you will see hundreds of women that are like, give that kid chicken nuggets and French fries, just let them be a kid. But here's the thing. If you don't teach them healthy habits while they're a kid, you think that they're always going to have that energy level and they're always going to have that metabolism. And, you know, you don't have to deal with that today. You'll deal with it tomorrow. But it, what ends up happening is that at a young age, you are teaching them to develop unhealthy habits because they're just a kid. You know, let them have the candy, let them have the chicken nuggets and the cheeseburgers and the greasy food and the saturated fats and all of that stuff. They're kids, let them live. But the problem is you're letting them live through food right now. And later in life, they're going to be dying because they're still maintaining those same habits and they don't know any better. Well, I got two things uh, on that one. It, one is they are kids and I don't think it's wrong to give them sweets as a treat mm -hmm. every now and then. But no, it's not okay for them to get into the pattern or the habit of like that being their primary snack and, you know, and eating it all the time or whatever. Exactly. Second, um, I just saw this really, really sad and just heartbreaking video the other day of this mother she was talking about her daughter was at dinner and she was pitching a fit she was very young um and she was pitching a fit because she wanted to eat chocolate instead of eating dinner and her mom 
got on to her and was, you know, she wasn't being mean to her, but she was like, well, if you're going to act like this and, and you're not going to eat at your dinner, then you're just going straight to bed. So she put her, she sent her to bed without oh, I know giving her dinner about. and she passed away overnight. Yeah. And the mother is apparently like really, really dealing with this and blaming herself yeah. because she's posting videos and stuff about how it was her fault and blah, blah, blah. But um, it wasn't her fault though. No, it wasn't. And her if fault. she had given her the candy before bed, it probably wouldn't have changed the outcome. No, but, but her, her guilt is, guilt. yeah, her guilt is that she didn't give her that little bit of pleasure before she went away. But I'm sure that she had many, many times before then. Right. And, you know? and another thing and that we will, never know what's going to happen. Another thing that, um, she mentioned was that she sent her daughter on her very last day of being alive to bed crying because yeah. she didn't get of her stupid chocolate, you know? Yeah. But, um, uh, so but I don't, here's the thing with that though. My heart goes out to that woman. I cannot imagine her pain. I don't ever want to know her pain personally, but she did not know that was going to happen. Right. Who in their right mind thinks that their healthy young child is going to go to bed and not wake up the next day. Right. But if you think like that in a constant anxiety and paranoid frame of thought that that could happen and you give them what they want every single time so that they don't end up passing away with, you know, upset in their mind then you're developing bad habits. Well, I'm not saying give it to them whenever they want. I'm saying I don't, they are kids and, you know, I don't think that having a sweet treat every now and then is. Right. It's all about moderation and knowing when it's okay and when it's not okay. It's getting colder in Georgia. Well, hold on. Let me fix that. (laughs) It's going back and forth between spring and winter (laughs) in Georgia. So one day it'll be 34 degrees the next day, it'll be 42 degrees. Then the next day, it'll be 30 degrees. And then the next day, it's 68 degrees. <laughs> and so my allergies are just going crazy. And I need to blow my nose. <laughs> and so I texted her and said, can you please bring me some ice water and some toilet paper? <laughs> because I'm dying. I feel like... I blow my nose more than I just breathe freely these days. And my whole face is chapped through here. Well, while we're waiting, I'm going to tell y'all about um, this little girl on TikTok. Um, When I am super stressed or really down or I just need a laugh or a smile, I go to this page. It is called Bella Foodie, B-E-L-L-A-F-O-O-D-I-E. And it is this little girl. And all it is is her eating her meals. And, I mean, she's got to be like three or four years old. And she eats everything that her parents eat. So, you know, she's she's not like a super, super picky eater. Um, she eats all kinds of things that you would consider to be adult food, like sushi, tobiko, um, just all kinds of stuff. Tobiko, what is it's that? It's that this, the little orange things on top of the sushi. Oh. That we love, but I never knew the name of. I learned the name of it from Bella Foodie. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, baby. Oh, this is so much better. Okay. So I'm going to finish what I'm saying, and then I'm going to blow my nose, and you can edit that out. Nope. <laughs> You're going to leave it. It's going to make people go crazy to hear me blow my nose. They say I sound like an elephant when I blow my nose. Have fun with that one. Um, anyway, so she, her big thing is that ever since she was really little, when she first started eating, she's dipped her food in something, you know, a sauce, a jam, a something. Clara Mary used to do ranch. Yep. On everything. Yep. And so she says, while she's eating, she says, dip, dip, over and over. She's like, dip, dip, 
It is the cutest thing. And there's no way that you can stay sad or down or stressed while watching her videos. So I will scroll. I will scroll as long as I need to, to be able to feel better just watching this little girl eat. Well, that's good. And I thought I would share that with y'all in case you don't know about Bella Foodie. You should go and check her out and, you know, follow her so that you have that in your back pocket when you need to pick me up. You can go and watch and she's just the sweetest thing. She's always thanking her parents like um, and then she shares food with her mommy and daddy. And she's like when he gives her food, she says, thank you, daddy. It's so cute. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Another thing is that I stay dehydrated and I drink water constantly, don't I? Nope. But I stay dehydrated lately. Okay. So got the weight loss. I told y'all about Bella Foodie. Now I have something, but are you sure you don't want to save this? This is going to be a long discussion, possibly, potentially. Do you want to tell what you're... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So I have a question for you. What's up? I was scrolling through the internet the other day, like I do. Not the internet. And I saw a question. And usually this is something that I would just scroll past, but I tried and the question would not leave me. And I really like sat and thought on this and I had to go back and really like dig in. And does Christianity progress? What do you mean? Does Christianity change to fit the times? Um, I think it depends on the church, and I think it depends on the congregation and the pastor, and because there are some um, churches that have kind of. Uh, what do you call it? Um, watered it down. Conformed. Or con yeah. Conformed to uh, conformed to the uh, world as it is today. Which would be progression. And then there are churches that are very traditional, and I think that they go strictly by what they see in the Bible as being truth, and that's the values and morals that they stick by here's my thing i think the answer is yes i think since the beginning of religion it has changed and adapted and progressed to fit the times and the people and what's going on in the world and whoever is ruling at the time and whoever is head of the board so to speak at the time um I think that people will try to say Christianity doesn't change. Christianity has always been the same, but it's not true. If you look back and you go back, there are a lot of things that happened in the Bible that don't happen today. That, you know, if Christianity never changed, then that would have never changed. It would have never went away. Right. Um, so if we go back more recently, though, not to stoning children that misbehave, but go back more recently to just when granny, your granny, was a, a young girl, they weren't allowed to cut their hair and they weren't allowed to wear anything but ankle length skirts. Right. And that was actually something that was, you know, started in churches. Women wore dresses, men wore slacks or pants. Right. And it was not allowed that women would wear pants. But that goes back to my point because there are some traditional churches that still do that. Right. But they're very few and far between. Oh, yeah. Because the it congregation, is not, they're getting older. It's not yeah. the majority now. Right. Mm -hmm. Where it used to be the majority. You know, right. Granny got in trouble one time and she got um, punished. For coming home from school in pants. Yeah, but that wasn't church. And But it came from church. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. It came from the church that her father went to telling him that women only wear dresses. Right. 
And now you go into any Bap- Southern Baptist church on a Sunday, and you're going to see 20 women wearing blue jeans. Oh, yeah. Uh, some people don't even, you know, they don't even dress up for Sunday church anymore. Or, right. You know. And their, their hair is cut and styled. They're wearing makeup. You know, there's they're wearing jewelry. All of this stuff wasn't allowed before at one time right you know that would have been considered being vain which is a sin right and so christianity does change it does progress maybe the message does not change right Right. but the religion and what it accepts and what it you know allows does change right the message does not the message that Jesus Christ came to earth to you know, teach us how to be and then to ultimately die on the cross for our sins and rise again, that message does not change. Right. right. But there are so many other things that do. And people get, they the discussion online under <clears throat> this question was so heated. And people were very, very upset on both sides. You know, there are people saying, no, Christianity doesn't change. We don't progress. This isn't that kind of religion. If you want that religion, go blah, 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 blah. And then there are the people on the other side that are saying, you know, your Bible was made up by somebody that blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And then they're like, you've got to change with the times or you're going to lose your congregation. The conversation got very interesting. I would like to sit in the room with both sides of these people. (laughs) Right in the (laughs) middle of a war. And and, there are two things that will start a war, and that is politics and religion. I don't want a war, though. I just want an open discussion. Yeah, but. But it it would be hard from the extremists on both sides to get an open discussion. Uh, Yep. Because there is no middleman anymore. It is. I'm the middleman. Well, well, I'm saying majority <laughs> is either extreme one way or extreme the other way. There is, it's very rare that you get a middleman in the middle of something like that. Well, I think people have become very narrow-minded now. Like very narrow-minded, they don't want to hear anybody else's perspective on things. That is true, and it has become worse in the past few years. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we spent way too much time alone and during covid but it was happening before covid to be honest yeah um it, it got a lot worse during covid because yeah. you were stuck in your own little bubble when they had the lockdowns and everything you were stuck in your own little bubble you couldn't do anything you couldn't go anywhere you didn't get other perspectives from other people the the people that you're around you know you always hear their same perspective all the time because you're always around them and you know so you didn't get to go out and meet, talk to strangers or whatever and see how they felt about things. Well, I think and, that another thing is that, you know, because I am somebody that if if you're just going to be close-minded and um, trying to think of how to put that. If you are constantly hitting me over the head with the hammer of your opinion and your beliefs and you're unwilling to listen to any of mine or anyone else's, um, I'm going to shut you down. I'm going to, I'm going to shut you out. Right. And so I am somebody that to keep my own peace, I will only keep people around me that are like-minded. It's not because I can't handle somebody else's opinion. Most of the time it is because they're rude in their delivery, um, or they're obnoxious or abrasive and, aggressive and i can't take that um it's like there's there's not a discussion anymore like calm discussion about well this is how i feel this is how i feel and we'll have to agree to disagree or meet in the middle right you know there isn't a lot of that anymore and so i do tend to shut people out that are belligerent in their beliefs people are very hell-bent on being right especially nowadays and nobody wants to hear 
anybody else's perspective because of that. Yeah. Because if they, if somebody else has a perspective that's different than theirs and they are, you know, starting to realize, oh, maybe they're right, then it scares them. It freaks them out. And that that's where you start getting your aggression and no, they panic. Right. Yeah. They panic. Yep. Yeah. People. I'm guilty of it. it I've done it. it. It's like the saying, people hate what they don't understand. Yeah. So. Yeah. That is true. It scares people. Yep. Humans are um, very sensitive and, and very fragile beings mentally well, and emotionally. It, it, it seems like it's gotten a lot worse. That is like, true. You you can't talk politics without a, without a fight breaking out. You t- can't talk religion without a fight breaking out. I think that it's been that way you, since... You know, the beginning, though, because that's something that I've heard my whole life. My parents heard their whole life and so on and so on. You never talk politics or religion ever. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm pretty sure. It has been that that way forever, but I'm saying it's gotten a lot worse now because, like I said, there is there's very few middle men that will that can, you know, take both sides perspectives and kind of mesh it into one it's just it's either got to be one well, because way or it doesn't other. have to be meshed into one to be honest well no everybody can have their difference of opinion and their difference difference in beliefs there can still be you know different sides to something right um the problem i think is lost in the middle where it, you have to be able to be willing to let people feel and believe differently. Right. And right. still, you know, if it's not detrimental to you or your health or your physical well-being, still be able to love them and be friends with them. Right. Yep. Um and that's really tough for some reason right now. You know, it's you either do it this way, my way, or you're out. Yep. Uh I mean even during the last election, you know, people were saying that it got so heated during family gatherings and stuff that, you know, a lot of family just stopped talking and yeah. friends and, and whatever, and everybody just kind of separated. But, um, I don't know it, it, if you're not, if people aren't willing to at least listen to somebody else's perspective without getting angry or or freaking out, then it's never going to work anyway. Uh, yep, I agree. I hope that we see that day again where there's a lot of open discussion happening and and difference of opinion being tolerated and accepted because, you know, that's where, that's where magic happens. Yep. When two different minds can come together and, you know, have this conversation – you might create something really great out of that. Yep. But if you can't come together and have that conversation, then all that you get is this constantly. Yep. And so there's no room for growth. There's no room for learning. There's no room for teaching anything new. I agree. Yep. That's all I had. Those, those three things, my weight loss, Bella Foodie, y'all go check her out. And does Christianity progress or change? What do you think? Tell us in the comments, because I am really, really curious to hear what everybody has to say on this. But no be fighting. respectful. No fighting. No fighting. No keep, ugliness. Keep it calm, kids. <laughs> um, I just, I don't know. I if people would become a little bit more tolerant of other people, I think it would just be a much better world and we wouldn't have all the crap that we have, but that's just my opinion. Um, so I am talking about this week. Um, I am going through a bunch of crap. My, my, I, I was diagnosed with Meniere's disease years and years and years ago. And if you don't know what that is, it's like an inner ear disease. And it can cause deafness. It can cause ringing. It causes vertigo. It causes all kinds of just 
off the wall health issues. And it's really hard to have it and have to edit a podcast. <laughs> but, um, don't I, edit it. Huh? Don't edit this one. Oh, you, I have let to, it free fly. No, I have to, I still have to audit it. I mean, <laughs> uh, edit the audio. Um, but that, so for the past like two or three weeks, um, my hearing in my left ear has gone to crap. I've got a constant like ringing now. Um, doctors said it was probably going to happen years ago. In 2006. Yeah, in 2006. And it's finally caught up with me. Um, and that's really, really bad. Um, like, it, I don't know if you can imagine having water stuck in your ear for a month. And there are people that, you know, it. It's stuck in their ear forever. And My I'm, mom. I'm, yeah, Tina's mom is like that. And I'm kind of expecting um, to hear that that's going to be where I'm at right now. But so I, I've been kind of ill and I've been just kind of snappy <laughs> and, and, um, because it, it really makes you just not feel well at all. And not to mention that, you know, when you're talking to people, you can't hear what, what they're saying and, and you have to have them repeat themselves over and over and over and over and over. And, uh, it's just, it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard. And We're especially used to it. Huh? We are used to it. Your wife and your kids, because we have to do that with my mother. Well, yeah. But when you're, when you're. The person going through it, it's, it's hard. I understand. I'm just saying, don't feel bad asking us to repeat ourselves. Um, and it doesn't help working in a very noisy environment because my ringing, it changes pitch when I'm at work and it gets a lot louder and it gets a lot harder to maintain balance and to hear and to function. Do the ear protections that they offer not help at all? Yeah, they do help, but you still get sound in there. It, it's very, very loud in there. That's just working in manufacturing. That's what you have to deal with. Um, other than that, I am going on a uh, seven-day working spree this week. Um, 12-hour shifts. 12-hour shifts for seven days straight. Um. So I'm putting in 84 hours back to back. Um, so that's going to be rough on top of the Meniere's kicking He chose in. this. I did. I volunteered for this, yes, for Christmas. And uh, the only other thing I really have is I wanted to talk about manifest manifesting your dreams. Tina is a really big believer in this. And it's, for the most part, it's worked out really well for her. Mm -hmm. But uh, not just really manifesting your dreams, but also kind of uh, rebooting your mind, if that's the way to say it. Boy, um, oh boy. If only we had an easy button. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but I, I've been watching a video on how to, uh, or not video, but videos on how to do this. Oh, good. And sure. basically what people are saying is that throughout the day, you kind of, if you start getting like intrusive negative thoughts to replace them with something positive and continue to do that mm -hmm. until it becomes a habit. Right. I've said that for saying? years. Huh? I've said that for years. Well, yeah. <clears throat> That's how I taught myself that I'm cute. You are cute, <laughs> very cute, beautiful, gorgeous, but also manifesting your dreams, um, just putting it out into the universe and saying, like, whenever you're re trying to reach a goal, to sit there and reassure yourself that you can do it mm -hmm. over and over and over, and it's the same concept as rebooting your mind, where you're just taking positive things and saying, and just reassuring yourself over and over and over and over again. Can I say something? Absolutely. But 
it is not like wishing on a star. No, no. You don't just throw it out into the universe and and act like you're fishing and you hope you catch it and it comes back to you. You have to be doing this, you know, putting out that positive thought, that positive energy, constantly telling yourself that you can do it while you're working towards it, working while you are taking steps towards the goals that you want to reach. Right. Well, I mean, you got to put the work in too, definitely. Right. Yeah, it's not... Um... I don't want people thinking, you know, if they it's just not... sit and think really, really hard that, you know, they're going to be able to use the force and it's going to come to them. Ooh. Hey, speaking of that. <laughs> no, it's not going to come to oh, you like. Nope, this side. This side. Why can't I get him? Oh. There he is. <laughs> that was so hard. No, it's not. It's not like rubbing a uh, lamp and, and getting wishes from a genie. Oh, you, God, that you would gotta, be awesome. You got to. You got to. Put it into your head that you can do it and do the work to get it. And then that is your manifestation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else to add on top of it? Well, I do because um, something that is that goes right along with that is meditation right, and vision boards. And I am a really, really big believer in vision boards because if you can see it, it makes it easier to manifest it. If you can visually see what you're working towards and you constantly have it in your view, then you are more likely to keep moving towards it. Right. And so I would suggest as homework to our viewers, if this is something that you're interested in, Collect magazines, um, all different kinds of magazines, Better Homes, Women's Health, Men's Health, you know, um, all different kinds of magazines. Um, and, and save them up until you have enough to go and clip out things that look like what you want in your life. And then glue them onto a poster board and put it somewhere that you're going to see it every single day, yep. multiple times a day. Right. Um, put it in a high traffic area in your house so that you always are looking at that and envisioning that and actively try when you have quiet time or some downtime, if you're sitting in the bed, you're about to read or about to turn that TV on before you do that, look at your vision board and picture yourself living in it. And it really does help. I have not done it in a long time, but I'm about to. I've been saving my magazines. I got to get my poster board. Got to get my glue. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this again. We can do it together. Um, but it really does work. It really helps to keep your mind focused on what you want. Um, but yeah, I, I wish that I could manifest winning the lottery <laughs> or manifest. You know, well, quickly. you're not, you're not going to win the lottery if you don't play it. Well, that's true. I need to play and, and get you, and the you multiplier. you got the same chance as anybody else. I'm just going to put that out there. If you do play the lottery, I'm not telling you to play the lottery. I am not telling you to go gamble your life away or your life savings away. I'm saying if you do, don't forget to get the mega plier or the multiplier, depending on which game you play, because they really do help. But anyway, um, I was going to say. I rarely play. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I'll explain it later. Um, <laughs> right. Anyway, so I was going to say, I wish that I could manifest waking up 150 pounds lighter. It would be like big, you know, where he like wishes to be an adult and then he wakes up the next morning and he's an adult. I want to wish and, and manifest and meditate on losing 150 pounds and then wake up in the morning and I'm thin. Yeah. Or the... Worst case scenario, um, you got thinner. Not thinner. I don't want to do thinner. Like as not, not, I don't want to do Stephen King's thinner. <laughs> Look, I took the words right out of your mouth. <laughs> Our children are trying. Are texting you during the podcast. <laughs> because Mary said, I am making videos now, so I shall be busy. <laughs> Did you text her back and said, you're already making a video and <laughs> stop texting you? No, she wants me not to text her. But it's okay for her to text or, you. Well, or call her, because if I do, then I interrupt her video because she's making it on her phone. 
but she uh, she's I understand what you're saying. Video. It's okay, Johnny. Get a grip. Cover your ear. It's okay. First thing I'm going to do when I go up there is call her. No, you're not, yes, sir. You are not going to go upstairs lesson. and be a 45-year-old petty Betty. No. A petty Betty? Yes. Anyway, that's all I have. Well, then I'm going to talk some more. Y'all, I don't talk a lot. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not a talker usually, but I got stuff to say today. Uh, you- Talking about manifesting what you want in your dreams. So... It is dreams, not nightmares. It is a dream of mine and Johnny's to own a ton of land in the country and have a trailer on it, you know, and most of the time when you say that people think of like those rusted out, you know, 1970s trailers that really need some attention and love, which if you live in that and it's doing you well, more power to you. But there is a mindset in this world that says, if you live in that, then you're trash. Is there not? No. And I grew up, you know, before I had, before I lived in the home that my parents live in now, the first part of my childhood, I grew up in trailers. I grew up in those rusted out old 1970s trailers. One of my favorite houses that we had was a trailer. Yep. And so I, I don't have the prejudice towards trailers like a lot of people do. My daughter Clara also does not. And it is her dream right now to have a trailer of her own on our land with us and be, you know, have a home and be financially comfortable. And we don't care what the outside of our house looks like. You know, we care about the functionality. And so Mary, my other daughter, when she hears trailer, she she panics. And we she told me yesterday that it's because she knows what other people think about trailers. And she cares what other people think um, as far as like it putting a stigma on her. And so I took her and Clara to um, Comfort Homes in Athens to show them what trailers look like now. And they literally look like houses. So I took them and we walked around. And, you know, the first one that we went into is always the Lula May. Mm -hmm. And Clara instantly fell in love. She loved the Lula May. It's, it looks like a farmhouse. Oh. It's got the wraparound porch. It's got the beams in the ceiling. You know, it's got the flooring and the kitchen is huge. We live in this big house, this big five bedroom house. And well, my kitchen is teeny tiny. I think it has about the squ- same square footage as our house. Except that a lot of it is in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. yeah. That kitchen is, oh, my God. It is a... I mean, I remember the bedrooms being pretty big. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been there or seen one, but... So, that was the one that Clara fell in love with. But, when Johnny and I were first looking, it was $110,000. And then I think it went on sale for one hundred and four dollars at one, one time. Mm-hmm. It is $200,000. Yep. For the then Lula you got to right add now. your land into that. Then you have to add your land and your setup. Yeah. So your well to be drilled if you have um, untouched land, your septic, your electricity, you know, all of that, you have to pay to have that done. Your foundation put down, your skirting, all of that. Your driveway graveled for you. You know, it it starts to add up really quickly. Oh, yeah. Johnny and I were talking about it yesterday, and it is insane. You know, it used to be that if you could not afford a house... You would go and you would get a trailer and, you know, you would be doing better financially if you went that route. But now they've made it so that it's it's the same or more. worse. It's more. <laughs> By the time you add your land and get the trailer, 
you're going to end up paying more than what you would pay for a house. Right. And so it's just crazy to us. But anyway, by the end of the day, we spent about an hour and a half out there. We went and walked on ev- walked through every trailer that we could. They even had like a modular out there that we walked through that was $325,000. Um, Which is absolutely insane. It, by the time you got done with that, you're spending like close to a half a million dollars. Yes. So, but the one that, that Mary fell in love with is called the Christina. And it was beautiful. It had a living room, a den, you know, it had three bedrooms. The Every bedroom had beautiful closets, wonderful space. Fancy kitchen. It was, yes, it was like all modernized, which speaks to Mary's heart. Um, it was just really beautiful. Had a lot of amenities and upgrades in <clears throat> the outside. Looks like a house, you know. Mary was singing a completely different tune. She was like, all right, this is mine. I'll take it. So we we succeeded in changing Mary's mind. And for by, 325, no, oh, 200, no, 225,000. Yes. Well, but Mary is our, our daughter that has expensive taste in everything. Her food, she's got to have shrimp, lobster, crab, you know, she could have that every day. She is our bougie daughter. <laughs> Um, and Clara ended up finding another one called the Dark Sands that she liked just as much as the Lula May, but it was sixty thousand dollars cheaper. I actually like that one too. Yeah, like the Dark Sands. Oh. Um, and the one that uh, y'all looked at before that, the veranda. So Tina took video of <laughs> her walkthroughs at these trailers, but um, the what is it called? The veranda? Veranda, yeah. That one and the uh, Dark Sands one is... I'd, I'd take any of, either one of those in a heartbeat. They're both $140,000. They're both three-bedroom that can be turned into four-bedroom. Mm-hmm. They both have huge kitchens, really nice-sized bedrooms. The veranda, the veranda is nice because it doesn't look... I don't know how to put this, how to say this without offending somebody. So I'm just going to say it. But it just looks like a standard trailer. It looks like a standard double standard wide trailer. modern trailer. Um, you know, there's no special roof pitches. There's nothing spectacular about the appearance of it from the outside, from the front. Okay. It just looks like a beige, run of the mill double wide trailer. Um, but when you open the door, it's like walking into the Harry Potter tent and it just opens up and it is beautiful. It is modernized. There's a lot of detail. Um, it's spacious. And then when you walk through, there is a covered back porch and that speaks to me. Yeah. Are you talking about the one with the fireplace? No, that's the modular. Oh, Oh, okay. Or not the that's not the modular. That's that's the one that's another trailer Chris, next. Christina or whatever. That's not the Christina. Okay. No. I didn't get the name of that one. I need to. I need to go back and get the name of that one. There was one that was a three bedroom, two bath, and it had a covered back porch and the whole wall inside of the house leading out to that porch was glass. Um, but on the outside on the porch was a fireplace. This is not the one I'm talking about. I imagine that one's probably two hundred or more. Yeah. Um, but the veranda has a covered back porch and I grew up sitting on the front porch during storms with my dad, watching the storms and, you know, just relaxing to the thunder, the rain and the lightning. And so that's something that I miss very, very much because we don't have a covered porch here in this house. No. We barely have a porch out front at all. And out back. The oh yeah yeah porch the, out back is I'm scared of it. I don't even <laughs> I wouldn't even consider our front porch a porch. To be yeah. honest with you. So I miss that, and you know if I am gonna sell this house ever and move, I definitely have to have a porch. Yeah. I have to have a covered porch because I have to be able to sit outside and enjoy the the thunderstorms yep and so 
we did that yesterday and it was a lot of fun. I got to spend time with my girls and, you know, teach Mary a little something, something about being prejudiced <laughs> towards trailers. Yeah, they don't make them like they used to. They used to make them pretty much completely out of aluminum. Well, even if they did, you know, because some of them are just plain Jane. You know, you can't worry about what other people are going to think about where you live. No, whatever works for you. They're not you know? paying your bills. You know, they're not living your life. It it doesn't matter what their opinion is. Right. As long as you are comfortable, you are financially um, responsible and, and doing well for yourself so that you are not house poor. Well, I wasn't I wasn't saying because of the looks. I'm saying because when you're building it out of aluminum, aluminum gives way after so many years and so you start getting a lot of issues and right. then that's more money that you have to dump into it and you know, and uh some of those older trailers if you look that are made out of the metal, they're like rusted on the right. outside that you know you get holes in them it's it's uh but they don't they don't make all of them like that anymore they don't make i haven't seen any that they made like that anymore oh i don't know i don't know everything that i've seen has been a wooden paneling yeah well so i just i just wanted her to you know realize that her opinion is all that matters you know yeah. her liking her her home is all that matters. Yep. Um, it doesn't matter what other people say or what they think because they're not living your life and you're not living your life for them. Right. So yeah. And I, I, I think I managed showing her that yesterday. Another favorite of mine is that Lula May. Yeah. yeah I know you love the Lula May. I love the Lula May too, yeah. but the price point is ridiculous to it me is, now. It's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah. My cousin actually owns that one. She has that. That's her house. I hope she got it before. She it did. She got it, she got it before COVID. <laughs> so she got the deal. Huh? She got a good deal on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not a good deal anymore. When we were talking to the lady out there yesterday, she said that COVID kind of ruined the industry a little bit and they ended up having to um, discontinue a lot of really loved and adored floor plans. Because they just couldn't get the building materials as easily anymore. Yep. Well, COVID is pretty much over. Everything's going back to normal. So it's time, time for them to, to drop those prices. Yeah, time to drop the prices. Because <laughs> it is absolutely insane. Like the average price for a home in America right now is $400,000. Average home. Average price. That's crazy. And ours has shot up double from what it, we paid for it to what it's worth now. It, yeah. It's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. As, they're, they're, it's almost like it's being set up so people just can't freaking live, you know? Don't get negative. I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to get negative, but... It's going to bring you down. Yeah, I mean... But, I mean that's it made what, me think of... Um, that's the reality of it. Aiden and I were watching a movie the other day that I was showing to him on Disney, Blank Check. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. And in that movie, there's this huge castle, this big mansion, and they're selling it, and they think it's a lot of money. Everybody's like wowed by the price. They're blown away by how much it is. And it's $150,000. <laughs> well, I mean, back then, it would have been... Uh... <laughs> That would have been a huge chunk. All right. Can you imagine, though, today? Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely insane. It's funny to look back at that, though, and think, wow, they got a castle <laughs> for $150,000. It was in a bad neighborhood. No, I'm just kidding. No, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> well, that's all I have today. That's I all I got, too. I know that you need to. to go to sleep. Yes, I do need to go to sleep. I, I got... Uh, what about three hours left before I have to go? Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so if you like the podcast, make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and comment, and all that good stuff because it helps in the algorithm for YouTube. 
And if you are listening to us on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure to leave a five-star review. And yes, please, please. And I tried, I, Google is no longer accepting um, podcasts. Oh. They are because Google, you know, owns YouTube. So YouTube is going to be their podcast platform. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why, because I noticed, you know, when we first started the other podcast, that they actually had a section up there for podcasts. And I was like, that's weird. But now I know. But they haven't set it up all the way. Um, so I, I don't know how that's going to work, but it'll work somehow. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if, if you like the show, make sure to like, subscribe, share, uh, comment, help get us out there so we can do this full time and get more shows out and, and, uh, y'all can keep up with our journeys and, <laughs> and, and, uh, hopefully be motivated and inspired by our journeys to start your own and, uh, go down a path that, uh, enlightens you rather than putting you into darkness. Uh -huh.